In the main body of the Getting Started Guide, you've learned how to create many different landscape elements, all of which include a 3D component. In the example files, we used design layer elevations to create two distinct planes in a simple terraced garden. This was an ideal way to get started so that you could concentrate on learning how the different landscaping element tools work. However, in reality, most landscapes are not flat nor do they fall neatly into distinct flat planes at different levels. How does Vectorworks handle sites that slope, and how can you represent these slopes in your model? Well, Vectorworks includes a very powerful suite of tools for creating and editing site models. You can use a site model to represent the existing site, and then use a series of site modifier tools to apply your design changes to the site, and even calculate the cut and fill volumes resulting from your changes. This process is far more detailed than I can cover in this short demonstration, so instead I'm going to show you how to create a site from your own measured levels and then use a finished model to show you how the landscape elements integrate with the surface of this model. The key to creating a successful site model is to have accurate height data. This could be information that you derive from your own survey, an imported survey, or it could be the spot heights or contours that you've determined as part of your design process. Create a simple slope. A site model can be created from stakes or loci that represent individual height measurements. Alternatively, it can be created from 3D polygons that represent contours. In this exercise, you'll create a simple slope from stakes representing individual level measurements. Create the levels. Choose File, Open, and open the file 1 Create Simple Site. The file contains a simple 2D polyline which represents the plan view of the outline of a site. We'll add some levels to this file and then create a 3D representation of the site. On the Site Planning Toolset, click the Stake tool. On the Toolbar, click Standard Insertion Mode. Click Stake Tool Preferences. Change Mode to Include as Site Model Data and then click OK. On the toolbar, change Elevation to 0 and press Enter. On the left edge of the polyline, click at the corners and two points in between to create four stakes that represent the elevation of 0. On the toolbar, change elevation to 1000 mm. Roughly one quarter along the length of the shape, place a vertical line of four stakes. Notice the new elevation is displayed by the stakes marker. On the toolbar, change the elevation to 2500 mm. Roughly halfway along the shape, place another vertical arrangement of four stakes on the polyline. On the toolbar, change the elevation to 3000 mm and place a further arrangement of four stakes, roughly three quarters of the way along the shape. On the toolbar, Change the elevation to 4000 mm and place a final set of stakes along the right edge of the shape. On a real site, you would clearly take more care over the positioning of the stakes. Click the Select Similar tool and click on one of the stakes to select them all. Choose Landmark, Create Site Model or AEC Terrain Create Site Model. Leave all the default settings and click OK. In a top plan view, you'll see a contour plan of the site. Change the view to left isometric. The site still displays a simple contours. On the Object Info palette, change 3D Style to Mesh Solid. Render the site with OpenGL. 
Now you can clearly see the surface of the site. Place plants on the model. Return to top plan view. On the site planning toolset, click plant. Choose poly edge spaced mode. And from the plants drop down list, choose Circus Siliquostrum. Place a row of Circus Siliquostrum on the site, moving up the slope. Repeat this on another part of the slope. Change the view to left isometric again and notice that the 3D elements of the plants are automatically sitting on the surface of the site model. Return to top plan view and select the round wall tool from the building shell tool set. Choose radius mode and draw a simple round wall on the site. On the resource browser, locate the wicker table 60 by 60 symbol. Double click the symbol to make it active. Click twice to place an instance of the symbol, perhaps putting it within the boundary of the round wall. Change the view to left isometric again. Choose Landmark, Send to Surface. With the Selection tool, select the round wall and run Landmark, Send to Surface again. Notice that both elements now sit on the surface of the site and the base of the wall has been adjusted to suit the site. Close the file. Save it if you wish, but you don't need it for the next part of the exercise. Now we'll explore an example file. You've seen how you can use measured levels to create a representation of a simple sloping site, but now we'll take a quick look at a completed design so you can see how all the elements fit together. Open the file to slopingsite.vwx. Click the Layers button and look at the list of layers. The layer structure is similar to the layers you've seen in the other parts of the Getting Started guide, but the file also includes a site model layer. This time the design layers don't have different elevations. They are all set at zero. Elements on these layers will sit on the surface of the site model. In this case, the site model surface has been created with stakes, but has been adjusted to suit the design. This is achieved with the use of site modifiers which are beyond the scope of this guide, however note that they enable you to impose your design on the site and determine the changes, including cut and fill volumes. Make site model the active layer. Select the site model. Where earlier in the tutorial we created floor objects at different elevations to represent the site, here, the entire site is represented by one single object that sits below all the design elements. The surface of this object changes as the levels of the site change. Let's examine the source data for the site model. Like the earlier simple slope, this example model was also created from a series of spot heights measured across the site and entered with the Vectorworks stake tool. Right-click on the model with the selection tool and choose Edit Site Model Source Data. The model itself will be hidden, but in its place you'll see the data that we used to create the model. Change the view to Front and notice that each stake represents a specific point in 3D space. These are the points that Vectorworks has connected to create the surface of the model. Click Exit Source Data to return to the drawing area. Explore the complete design. Make hard landscaping the active layer. Click the selection tool and click on the elements of this layer. There are hardscapes, walls and custom stair objects. Look at the object info palette and notice that each object has a Z value and it has been placed on the surface of the model. The objects have either been positioned with the Send to Surface command or they've been placed at the correct elevation by typing the elevation into the Z field. Select a hardscape object and click Hardscape Settings on the Object Info palette. 
Notice that the 3D type is Pad Modifier. This is a special kind of object that flattens the site beneath the hardscape and adjusts the contours accordingly to accommodate the new design elements. Click Cancel. Make planting the active layer. Notice that each plant is sitting at the correct elevation on the model, but the Z value on the Object Info palette remains at zero. Plants automatically sit on the surface and you don't have to do anything special to make this happen. Set layer options to active only. Finally, make site modifiers the active layer. This layer contains a series of other modifiers which are objects that can change the surface of the site model. For example, the pad toward the bottom of the slope creates a flat area on which the raised pool sits. Change layer options to show snap others to see the entire site again. Make the sheet layer, Sheet 1, 3D Views, active. This sheet contains four viewports of different parts of the site. Creating a site model gives a much more accurate depiction of your design intent. Make Sheet 2, Plan View, the active layer. The site model is a hybrid object and in top plan view forms the base for the design drawing. It also displays the proposed contours for the scheme. Well, that's the end of this introduction to working with slopes. It really is intended as a starting point only, but you can see from the demonstration file that a site model plays host to the design elements and site modifiers are used to adjust the surface of the model to accommodate the design elements. You can find more information about working with tools that can adjust a site model within the Vectorworks Service Select portal. To summarise, you've seen how to create a site model from simple height points, how landmark design elements such as hardscapes and plants can be set to sit on the surface of the model, and you've gained an introductory awareness of the concept of site modifiers which can change the surface of the model to accommodate the design. I hope you found the video useful.